many priests do you think lived in it? <laughs> a good answer <laughs> however maybe there were seven buried in it it only got the name the priest's house uh, because um, in the 1700s or 1800s there were a couple of priests or a number of priests buried here <coughs> and um, uh, some, one or two of them had the gift of healing and people were coming to the graves to, uh, to hear to take away the clay but you know in my research Recently, I've discovered, well, number one, what it would appear that this was built of originally was to house the relics of St. Kevin. There's quite a number of references to the relics of St. Kevin. And at a certain stage, possibly in the time of St. Larkin and O'Toole, uh, or around about then, it would appear that this little building was, was built then uh, to house the, the relics. Some suggest because of its precise shape and so forth, it's also the type of building that might have been built over his uh, burial place. However, I, I, I discount that um, and I won't go into the details why. Um, well, it wouldn't be called a priest's house, I'm sure, if, if, he's, if he was buried here, uh, that there'd be the name would have come down. But seemingly as well, in these places that were um, used to uh, house relics, even back before the priests were buried in it, in places that little buildings were put to house relics, uh, pilgrims often brought home clay from the floor of them if they got into the Nepal, uh, they brought home clay or whatever they could get from the floor of them. Now it would look as if, even though it was built to house relics, it would look as if Mass was indeed celebrated here on a few occasions. Uh, which are, or what would it be if this is only built up again, what was likely where the altar was, and then the east window, just like is in all the chapels in over the altar. But then, uh, when mass, after mass was over, or whatever, the relics seemingly would have been placed here, and people were able to reach in through the window uh, to touch the relics uh, when it was not. So this would have been a special spot where people came with their intentions. People who had walked maybe from Port Leash at least, maybe even from Limerick or Kerry all the way up to Glendalough, um, would have come here with our special intentions. And so I invite you once again now today to think of your number one prayer for yourself, your number one prayer for your family, and perhaps a prayer for somebody's conversion or deliverance from some problem. Kevin was buried there, However, I must say, having examined the evidence, I reject it. Uh, number one, he was meant to have been buried south of the lower lake, and that's, uh, or no, east of the lower lake, and that's more southeast. Number two, it seems hardly likely that the monks in the monastery would have allowed for him to be buried in there. Um, so I, I, I don't believe. Perhaps the may have assisted the nursing in just the walls in stone, but everything, the roofs in stone. It's possible that part of the reason for the entire structure being in stone, the big problem when crowds attack when the burn. And of course it had the walls and the roof and in stone and next to no timber in it at all, well then it would have been harder to burn it. So that may have been part of the reason it's all in stone. Uh, there would have been a sanctuary area at the end, um, at one stage, but it has fallen still. Uh, there's what sometimes referred to as a circus, but it was likely it wasn't a circus there alongside it. Um, and then the little tower uh, up on the top. Uh, it's possible, I would suggest, that that little tower on the top served as the bell tower before the bigger tower was built. It's also possible that funerals were held there and that uh, there would have been the handy bell tower for the funerals uh, if they were being held in it. It's also possible that it was uh, the monastery church. Yes, we will be true to thee till death.
the name of that child is known uh, from the, the, the stories that have been passed down. The, the name of the father is known, the name of the grandfather is known. Of all the stories that have come down, I believe that that have a, a grain of truth in it. Um, but I would suspect that even then, already then, that most likely the women's centre had already opened at that stage, I would suspect, uh, that he had already done it was opened as a double centre, one for men, uh, one for women. But uh, the place where uh, was meant to give the milk is just, will be passing by it, I'm just mentioning it for the sake of those who will be going, uh, going back uh, to that, that story concerning the Dean's Deer, Deer Stone Affair. Now for those of us who will be walking up the one mile up to the upper lake, it will be long, it will be along the path that pilgrims from the east would have come, who weren't very many. The majority came over the mountains from the west. But we'll be walking along a pilgrim path and also along a path that St. Kevin would have used regularly going from the monastery up to his cell. Um, and again St. Lawrence O'Toole would have would have used it regularly. And I would suggest that we will go in silence silent prayer that just for this 20 minutes while we're walking up that path that we will maintain silence area so it would look as if it most likely was originally up there rather than back here but still that if we have extra space in there would be an extra space for what we would call the concelebrants uh, the other priests and perhaps uh, groups coming here would have been led by a priest and two back in those days uh, there would have been perhaps a number of priests for the celebration of mass and this area uh, for them and uh, possibly uh, much of the time it was standing in the, in the rest of the church, uh, most likely much, much of the time. For some reason, normally the, the side windows were in the, the south side, whatever the reason, I, I don't know, I haven't that one figured out yet, but you would normally find there in the south side. So that's, I'm just saying a few extra words in case the other couple of people wanted to, uh, to join us, but they, they don't seem to. Um, so becoming aware once again, <laughs> at this very spot in here, that Mass was celebrated for several hundred years, that this would have been the main pilgrimage church, that people would have come over those, walking over those mountains, we'd just come a mile on the flat, they'd have come walking over those mountains, down the snake, down the side of the mountain, across the valley, and kept coming here uh, to what's now known as Reefer Church, it couldn't have been known as Reefer Church back then, um, God only knows what its name was, <coughs> Reefer Church, it just got that name later on, because some of the O'Toole kings were buried uh, in, in the grounds here, a burial place of the kings, Reefer, the burial place of the kings. But becoming aware of the, the sacredness once again. The Mass was celebrated here for hundreds of years. The people came here with their intention. 40 years um, praying in, in this cell because of the sense of the sacredness of the cell. Incidentally, may I just say, in case I forget to say it uh, afterwards, they used to say, as I mentioned earlier, that seven pilgrimages to, to Glendalough was the equivalent of one pilgrimage to Rome for those who came with the right disposition. And I would just suggest that climbing up here today for some of you it was the equivalent for somebody like myself of climbing Croke Patrick. And there was as much grace in it for you as there would be in, in climbing Croke Patrick for me and uh, well done. <coughs> but the story is told back in those days uh, they used to pray kneeling down with their hands out as indeed they, do, they still do in some convents in Europe, St. Faustina's convent, those convents they regularly pray uh, kneeling down with their hands out. And the story goes that on one occasion when St. Kevin was kneeling down in prayer with his hands out that um, a bird and uh, became a robin in the story, or not a robin, a blackbird in the story, lit on his hand. And um, Kevin had such a love for nature and he was such a great man for prayer that he kept his hand still. And the blackbird delighted with herself, laid her eggs in his hand. 
and still delighted with herself, she hatched her eggs in his hand. Uh, that's the, uh, how, how the story took wings, took feathers, shall we say, as it was passed down from generation to generation. And indeed, to make the miracle even bigger, in most statues you see of uh, St. Kevin and the blackbird, guess which blackbird is in his hand? The male blackbird. So as the male blackbird is hatching his eggs in, in his hands, that are complete black with the yellow beak. At least the picture we have in God's cottage, maybe I'll say a word about that when we go back, with God right, it's the female blackbird anyway um, that, that is hatching uh, her eggs. But the message from it is partly, of course, love of, of the birds, but also persistence in prayer. Now, for those who would feel up to it, this is certainly not obligatory. Uh, for those who feel up to it, I'll invite you, if you can find a smooth spot, if you wish, to kneel down and extend your